Hey everybody, my name is Frank and today I'm going to be talking about how to build a wire rabbit cage that's relatively inexpensive because I got these two new rabbits back here and only one of them has a cage but it's a single unit and I kind of want to keep them together sort of like these guys are together over here they've got a double unit so I'm just going to be talking about like the different tools and components you need to build this and then kind of going through the process of actually building the cage so if you're interested in making a relatively cheap durable cage just keep watching all right so first let's just take a look at what we're going to be making here and it's really simple design it's just 14 gauge two inch by one inch gap wire uh, that i tied together with i believe that's also 14 gauge just like straight wire off of a roll i'll show you the components in a minute here i've got three quarter inch emt legs I believe those are five feet tall so you could buy a 10 foot length at your hardware store like a Lowe's or Home Depot or something just cut them in half and those are connected simply by a wire pin that I just bent up myself and the pin kind of wraps around the cage there and then pokes through the EMT I just drilled a hole and then I just uh, wrap the wire back that's not 14 gauge that's thicker gauge so it's really sturdy um, there's really nothing to it uh, and then the bottom you can't really see the bottom here but there is hardware cloth I can't get to focus in basically the base is covered in half inch gap hardware cloth uh, and then a good layer of hay or grass just to keep their feet from getting worn down on the wire uh, and then the back of these cages here this double unit just has a little box and you can fill that with cardboard or something in the winter and of course like add like a poly tarp underneath your regular weather tarp I think this is just like a 8 by 6 possibly 4 mil tarp maybe a little bit thicker thicker the better I think but just keeps the rain off of them and stuff in the summer and then in the winter you add like a poly tarp and that really traps the heat in and you can throw a heat lamp in there or something if you want but they're really simple they're really durable this one I've had for a year I built it last summer and it's really held up the only place where I've had a problem is the feet and that's just because I didn't put this up on blocks so it sunk into the dirt and rusted down at the base also the the urine from the rabbits is really caustic I suppose and it just kind of eats through the galvanization over time but for the most part all the feces and urine just goes right through the cage uh, unless you let the hay pile up on the bottom. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the tools and components that you'll need. So, I'm going to actually be making the, I guess like the wire ties to tie the cage together myself. So, I'll be using just an angle grinder for that. And to make the actual ringlets, I'll be using this wire twist tool that I got at Tractor Supply. Um, and a drill, because it just makes coiling the wire into a spring really easy and then I'll just be using the angle grinder to cut that coil right down the middle to create a whole bunch of little loops which I'll use uh, the spring-loaded pair of wire strippers to just crimp down over here we've got some lineman pliers those are good if I need to like cut some tough wire like thicker gauge wire uh, and then some dikes or diagonal pliers that I, <laughs> I added some copper tubing to to give me a little extra leverage when I'm cutting the main wire, but I'll be using these to actually cut all the wire. And then if you're gonna go ahead and like make your own ringlets to crimp everything together, probably wanna get some ear protection if you're gonna be using the angle grinder. But otherwise, you could just grab yourself a pair of hognose pliers and they sell like ringlets, I guess, that you can use with the hognose plier to tie cages together. And they sell that at Tractor Supply and Rural King. The other stuff you'll need is one inch by two inch gap, 14 gauge wire. So I've got a roll of that here. Uh, the 14 gauge is pretty good. I don't know if you would need a thicker gauge, but this seems to work really good for the cages I already have. Then hardware cloth for the bottom. Uh, another little supplementary roll of the 14 gauge. 
Uh, and here I've got 14 gauge, just like straight galvanized wire, and all of this is galvanized. So the more galvanization on it, the better. So definitely get galvanized wire if you're gonna be putting this outside or have any sort of animals around it, which is the intent, so you need galvanized. But anyway, that's pretty much it. So now I'm just gonna get to work putting this thing together. Okay, so before I get started on actually cutting the cage wire and everything, I'm gonna make the ringlets or the crimp rings. So if you choose to do this yourself, uh, it's pretty easy if you have a drill and this little tool for working with wire. So this is what the final product is gonna look like. The outer di diameter of this is about a half inch. And if you look, it's not even really as big as my pinky there. Uh, you want it to be big enough to wrap around at least four 14 gauge wires probably just three really but at least four this way you can get a little bit extra to crimp around but you don't want it to be too big because then you're gonna have a lot of extra wire to be crimping and it just gets really tedious over time so uh, I'm gonna do my best to set the camera up so we could actually see the drill in action here and then I'm gonna go ahead and just make a whole bunch of these guys so that angle is pretty good All right, so you just want to go kind of slow. Make sure you don't get like your hand caught up in there or anything. And just kind of guide the wire on. And you're just going to, kind of like that, you can get caught up real easy. But you want to just kind of guide it on and get a spring. And make sure your hand does not get sucked down in there because that definitely hurts. Make sure you got enough slack. All right. And then to take it off, you just gotta take your diagonals and just clip it. You have a little bit of waste, but it's really not that bad. And then take it out of the chuck, and then slide it off. So, just like that, in less than a minute, you can get quite a few of these little ringlets. Every loop you see down the line is its own ringlet, so I'm gonna make like, maybe like five of these, and then we're gonna unzip them with the angle grinder. The next step in the process here is to take this little coil, or spring, and turn it into ringlets. So these ringlets are just gonna be like the crimp rings that we use to hold the cage panels together. So the way I'm doing this is probably not the best way or anything, but uh, I've put the coil on a stick and I'm just gonna take the angle grinder and just kinda run it right down the side. And the stick, the reason for the stick is to keep all the rings from just flying all over the place. In the past, I've used a bucket with water in the bottom of it, uh, and I just kind of hold one end with the Lyman pliers and just kind of unzip it that way, but that's a little unsteady. This way is a little bit more steady, so I like it a little bit better, but there's probably a better way to do this. Uh, definitely recommend wearing eye protection, 100%. Um, anytime you use the angle grinder, eye protection is a must. All right, I'm gonna set this up, try to get a good angle. So you can actually see the process in action here. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is on the ends of these coils, we have like the little piece that didn't quite get coiled around. So I'm just gonna clamp that, get that nice and tight. That's gonna hold it in place while I run the angle grinder down the side of it. And then I'm just gonna take the angle grinder and just go for it, and hopefully don't get hit in the face. All right.
All right. All right, so there we go. So the stick kind of did its thing and kept everything in place. And that's about that. There's definitely got to be a better way to do this. So if you know what that is, go ahead and leave a comment. But for now, this is all I got. So I am well underway into cutting the panels that are going to go into the sides of the cages. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but the panels, you're only going to need to cut two different sizes. Here is a two by two and the roll itself, which you can see here is pretty much gone. The roll itself is a two foot tall roll. I think I had 25 foot length, but the panels of the cage, you're going to have two by twos and you're going to have three by twos. The three by twos are going to be the long side of the cage. So this side here is going to be a three foot long by two foot high piece. And then the front panels and back panels are going to be the two by twos. So his cage is a two by two and her cage front is a two by two. Uh, all together, we're going to have four of the two by twos, one, two, and then the back two more, so that's four. And for the side, the side and bottom and top panels, we're going to have seven of those because we've got one on each side and then two on the top and two on the bottom. So that's seven. So all together, the length is going to be three feet times seven pieces, which is 21, and then two feet times four pieces, which is eight and add those together and you get uh, 29 feet. So you'll need at least a 30 foot roll and you're actually gonna need more. So you probably need about a 50 foot roll because you're gonna have to cut extra panels for the doors. Uh, I didn't really show the cutting process because there's really nothing to it. I'm just using my diagonals here. If you just have a tiny pair of diagonals, I was gonna try to pop these off. If you just have a tiny pair of diagonals, these handles actually end like right here. Uh, throw some some pipe on the end because it really gives you that extra leverage that makes it so much easier on your hands Just in general for cutting because you're gonna be doing a lot of cutting uh, and then another tip When you are getting rid of the excess wire right here It's re they shoot off when you clip them So they'll shoot off like five or six feet and if you don't want to be cleaning up a whole bunch of little nails wherever you're cutting you could take the piece and just bring it over to just like a full-size trash can. Just hold your piece over the edge of the trash can as you're cutting, and then as you snip, all of the excess waste will just fall into the trash can instead of shooting across your yard and you know you lose it and then you step on it later on. So it's pretty much it for the cutting and the dimensions. Next up, after I'm done, we'll just be putting it all together. All right, so here is where it gets tedious. So you're gonna want yourself a comfortable chair. You're gonna want to grab your very good, easy to work with wire strippers or other pliers that have a good grip uh, and probably your lineman so you can actually adjust these little guys, these little ringlets if you need to. But we're gonna be putting these onto the actual cage panels in order to connect everything together. Now, I wanted to point out that it's easy to connect these guys together when the wire that runs vertically along the edge of the panel is on the inside of the cage. So the reason for this is this is a this here is a front panel and that there is a side panel. So when they're all straightened out, you'll be able to tell what's actually going on here, but when these join at a 90 degree angle, you're going to have the horizontal wire kind of like colliding at the edge there so you want your horizontal wire facing out of the cage and you want your vertical wire on the inside of the cage because it makes joining at the corners just a lot more easy so there's not a ton of tricks like that but that is one of the ones that'll make joining the corners a little bit easier and it will also help prevent from these things pressing on each other and breaking your spot welds. So that's a good thing. But yeah, just get yourself a comfortable chair because this takes quite a while. I definitely recommend if you don't want to spend the time doing this, uh, just getting yourself a pair of crimpers. I think, I forget what they're called, hognose pliers. Get yourself a pair of hognose pliers and they actually sell little crimpers. I think it's like five or $10 a bag that you can use to just crimp your wires together. 
and it's a lot easier to do than this but if you're on a budget and you got some time then this isn't a bad way to go so I've got the perimeter all the sides done and I did them in two different sections so I have the right side here and the left side here you can call this the front and then you've got the sides and then all the way in the back you've got the back and the reason I'm doing it like this and working my way into the center is because in the center you also have the middle panel which runs through the middle to divide the two cages so they have their separate sides on either side and that is going to require me to crimp together these two as well as one that goes down the middle so that's going to be three crimps and if you accidentally start crimping wires it's easy to just kind of start working on different parts um, but if you accidentally start crimping things together and then realize you have to add another wire on top uh, it kind of sucks to have an existing crimp like we have here and have to add another wire on top of that because this will get in between that third wire and you just don't want that you want to be sure you're crimping all the wires that you're going to be crimping around at the same time because otherwise uh, you're going to do work that you're going to have to undo so that kind of sucks so from here I'm going to add the top and bottom to each side so the top and bottom here and then the top and bottom here and then I'll go ahead and I'll add that center piece and join everything together with the three crimps at this point I've got the two different sides of the cages pretty much completely done I do have to add a couple more crimps here and there but I have the basic structure done and I can add additional crimps later on what I want to do now before I actually put the middle segment in and tie these two pieces together is put the hardware mesh on the bottom of each cage this way the rabbit's feet aren't gonna fall through this stuff here and I know a lot of people will say the hardware mesh wire is too thin and it probably is especially if you have Rex rabbits or rabbits that have thinner fur but if you go ahead and just make sure you've got a consistent mat of hay that's really not going to be a problem because if we take a look at these guys over here or even this one here as you can see we've got hardware cloth but we've also got enough hay to where that's not really going to be a problem so while we got the cages apart like this it's really easy I'll just go ahead and cut uh, a 2 by 3 piece of hardware cloth for the base of, of here and for this one over here and also another piece of 2 by 3 hardware cloth to put on the middle section of the cage and I'll show you why we want to do that over here so these two guys actually get along pretty well but if you take a look in the middle there you can see I've got hardware mesh in between them as well uh, if the two rabbits that are next to each other don't get along very well you should probably put them in different cages but if this is all you have they can bite through these two inch verticals so they could stick their snout through and actually bite the other rabbit if they're resting up against the side of the middle of the cage there so hardware cloth down the middle is a good idea another way to combat this if you do have aggressive rabbits is to have the mesh horizontal so with the horizontal uh, mesh they can't really get their heads straight through they kind of have to tilt them sideways and it's a lot more awkward for them to bite each other but since these guys get along I didn't put a piece of hardware cloth in the back all right so now I just gotta throw that hardware cloth in and we'll be on to the next phase I installed the hardware cloth into the base of each side of the cage and now I've got the section cut for the middle so this is actually going to stand up between the two cages and that will have hardware cloth on it as well to keep the rabbits from biting each other if they get aggressive uh, I just wanted to point out that I'm actually cutting this a half inch shorter than it needs to be well I guess it's exactly where it needs to be but uh, since this stuff here the underlying mesh is exactly two by three feet I'm cutting the hardware cloth uh, 35 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches which is just a half inch shy of you know two feet and three feet in each respective dimension so what that does is it just allows the hardware cloth to sit perfectly flat uh, and leaves a little gap just all the way around uh, and you want that because if you don't 
have it so it fits in perfectly like that, it'll bow up a little bit in the middle, and then the rabbits will always be kind of bouncing around on this, which maybe it gives them a little extra give for hopping around, but I think they probably prefer to just have, you know, solid base. It's already going to be a little wiggly just because it's wire mesh, but all right. I'm going to go ahead and tie that on to the middle section and then slap these two together. Uh, but before I do, I just want to point out, in order to keep this stuff tied down, the hardware cloth to the uh, cage mesh, I'm using this wire here. It's just really thin wire. It's a little bit thicker than wire that you might find inside of a twist tie. If you don't have something like this, uh, you can probably find it at a hardware store or you could probably just use twist ties. I'm not putting a ton of it on. I'm just putting it in each corner and then on each side in the middle just to keep it tied down so it doesn't kick up because I don't want them to get around to the edges because they are kind of sharp. Um, and then for this middle section, I'm just going to try to keep the twists as close to the vertical wire as possible. This way they don't accidentally catch themselves on it. Uh, and I'll try to keep it away from like high traffic areas. So I'll put the twists like in the corners and try to keep it out of the middle section. So when they're walking by, they don't accidentally get caught on it. So here I'm just taking a quick shot of joining the two sides together and putting the middle divider in. So I got the hardware cloth on there, uh, just tied it up in the corners. And now I'm just crimping the two sides together and including the middle section in that crimp. So I'm just crimping three wires together. So if we look here, you can see that is going around all three, the middle section and the two side sections. So I'm just gonna go all the way around and sew it up. So here we have the completely merged set of cages. As you can see, everything kind of straightened itself out. The more crimps you put in, the straighter and more rigid everything becomes. Uh, I put a lot of crimps in the bottom here because I don't want to have to touch that again. I do recommend crimping the bottom first where the hardware mesh is because the hardware mesh being there makes it a lot more difficult to get these uh, crimp rings in and definitely do this first or near first but not last because doing it last is what I just did and that was kind of a pain but all that's left to do now is cut some front doors in and then put some legs on so stay tuned now that the cages are complete and merged together I'm gonna go ahead and slap some legs on it so I got two 10 foot lengths of 3 quarter inch EMT conduit and I didn't cover everything that you'll need in the beginning of the video like I thought I did because you'll actually need a drill bit and probably a drill or some other way to put holes in the EMT and you'll probably want to get a slightly thicker gauge of wire than 14 gauge. Uh, I, I guess this is 12 gauge wire. It's just galvanized wire for fencing applications. But the reason you'll want a slightly thicker gauge of wire and you're going to need to drill a hole is to Put these legs on the actual cage itself so you can see on this one all it is is that piece of 12 gauge wire just slid through the emt and how it wraps around the cage itself is right here you can see it's just kind of like wrapping around like a little loop they're super easy you just make pins you push them through and then you just tie them over around the pole so I'm going to go ahead and cut these and set them up to cut you can just use hacksaw with a metal blade uh, I'm probably going to use the angle grinder just because I got it. All right. I cut the five foot lengths for the legs. Now I just have to measure and drill holes. I just want to show real quick where the holes are drilled on the cage I already have. So basically, I'm just drilling two inches down from the top for the top connection. And then on the bottom, I'm drilling two inches up from the bottom. And you can see. It just is resting right underneath this second to last uh, horizontal wire on the cage itself and resting right below this second to top horizontal wire on the top of the cage and that's it those are the only two connections I thought those were good connection points because they're at the like the two farthest points that you can really connect to other than the top right here but I didn't want to put undue strain on this top 
right here so I went ahead and just did it on the second one because I don't want to pop this off because once you pop this off then the cage is kind of compromised so I wanted to leave that alone so I put the stress right here on it uh, but really all the stress is probably on the bottom one uh, also if you put them farther apart the legs are less likely to wobble back and forth but I really don't have any problems with that also just want to mention I saw two inch diameter EMT when I was at the hardware store and I was looking into it I was like well you know you could probably use the two inch but I think the three quarter inch is probably where it's at because it's just a little more durable and even though I don't have like super high winds here or anything uh, the half inch just seemed a little bit on the flimsy side so however it's about half the price of the three quarter so really you should decide on that uh, but alright I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes and see if I can get these connected on here I'm just drilling holes in the EMT I just wanted to give you guys a tip if you're doing this uh, the side that goes up against the cage is the side you want to drill into this way you can keep your holes parallel on that side and a really great way to do that is to use the the scored side of the EMT because they actually factory score this with inch marks on it and it's a really great way to just catch the bit of your drill in this little groove right here so there's actually a little groove if you make your marks on that not only can you line up the two holes along this score line so if I come down here you can see my other hole and what that does is it keeps your two holes that face the cage uh, in line vertically so you know they're gonna be right up against the cage corner there and it also gives your drill bit a nice little groove to kinda sit in this way you don't accidentally slide off because it's really difficult to just drill uh, into a spot on a rounded surface uh, and the other thing is drilling through the other side I just basically just drill straight through so once I'm through the the side facing the cage I just continue and drill straight out the other end so you're probably gonna get some burrs on the other end as you can see I got like a little metal piece of shrapnel there also it's harder to tell where the bit is gonna come out so it's important to drill into the side that's facing the cage otherwise you run the risk of having your holes you know possibly like an eighth inch or a quarter inch to the left or to the right or where you want it so just a tip for you guys there I'm gonna finish drilling these holes here the next thing I'm doing is making these pins for holding the legs to the cage these pins are just five inch lengths of 12 gauge wire galvanized wire and I'm just bending it over myself so I went ahead and cut all the lengths I'll need we have four legs with two pins each so we're gonna have eight of these these are just five inches long uh, you could probably get away with four but you want to give yourself a little extra just to work with so I'll go ahead and try to show you how I make these here so this angled right so the first thing you want to do is just take it and just bend it and try to keep the bend in the center as much as possible looks like I didn't quite get it there close enough all right next thing you can take your lineman pliers and just pinch down on the two ends and then you just want to take a hammer or something I've got a brick and just tap it down gently you kind of want to leave a little gap all the way at the end so like if you can see here, there's like a little gap right there at the end. And that's where the two wires in the side of the cage are gonna slide through. But the rest you wanna crimp down so it's pretty flat. So it's pretty simple and you go through making these pretty quick. All right, so now that we have all the pins done, it's time to put the legs on. So here I've got a leg lined up with the edge of the cage. Uh, made sure I've got the bottom where the bottom's supposed to be, where the hardware mesh is. And as you can see, the holes are lining up just below this horizontal, well, it's out of focus now, but that horizontal wire there, well, I guess it's vertical in this view, but when we stand it up, it'll be horizontal. You want the hole to be just underneath these uh, wires here, that vertical wire that you see. Here and on the bottom, sorry, I can't see because the sun is like, creating a ton of glare on the screen but you want it to line up there because the pins are gonna rest just underneath those vertical wires and that's what is going to support 
the cage on the leg. So you want to line those up as, as best you can. This way you have two horizontal wires supporting the cage weight instead of just one. Uh, Alright, I'm going to go ahead and try to get some pins in here. Putting the pins on is actually pretty easy. You just take the pin and slide it over the double wire here, which makes up the edge of the cage. You want to do it just below your supporting wire. This is the horizontal wire I was just talking about that will support the weight of the leg because when this cage is actually standing upright, the cage is going to be pulling down with the weight of gravity and the legs are going to be applying opposite force up and these wires here are going to stop the leg pin from sliding up. So that's where the support is coming from. This pin over here isn't on all the way yet, but you basically just take the pin and push it over those two wires and then just push it all the way up. And that hole that we left in the, the uh, I guess the crook of the pin there, that kind of, man, kind of like sits around those two wires and kind of gives them a little place to just, sorry about the camera work, it's terrible to uh, try to get focus on this with the autofocus camera. But as you can see, that hole just houses those two vertical wires of the edge of the cage. And then we just have to slide our leg over top of the pin here and then bend over the sides. So here we are with the pin through one of the holes in the top of the leg. And now what you wanna do once you get it through is you take your lineman pliers, you grab the top of the pins, and you just kinda of twist it just kind of twist it down and that will pull the pin up nice and close to the wires on the cage and it won't leave any space so you're gonna again sorry about this camera work but you see what I did there I just kind of pulled the pin through so the leg is nice and tight up against the cage and then you're gonna take your lineman pliers and you're going to just bend these pins around the pole of the leg all right, so there you have it. One of the legs is on. Go ahead and show you the final work with the pin here. So if we take a closer look at the pin, basically just once I had it pulled through and I twisted it like that to get it nice and close to the edge of the cage there, I just went ahead and bent these wires over each side of the pole like that, and that kind of holds it in place. And don't be alarmed if it moves a little bit, because it'll move side to side, but once this thing is in place and standing up, you don't have any trouble with that. If I go back to my original cage here, you see I kind of use the same technique, and this thing is harder to move. You can still move it, but where it's on the ground, it's a lot more difficult to move, and this thing has been standing in all kinds of storms and crazy weather for over a year now, so it does just fine. All right, I'm gonna go put the rest of these legs on this cage and then stand it up. All right, so here's the cage with all four legs on it. As you can see, I went ahead and bent over those clips, or those pins rather. It doesn't have to be too complicated or anything. Just make a, a bend, it doesn't have to be too close to the pole or anything, as long as it's not gonna come off when you pull on it and they're on there pretty good. So as you can see, I've got the pin wrapped just underneath that horizontal wire there on the top and on the bottom, and that is going to help distribute the weight evenly across those two horizontal wires. This way, I don't accidentally break a weld. And not only do we have those two wires on this side of the cage, but also on the other side of the cage, we've got two more horizontal wires. So we've got four wires total holding the cage up on this leg. All right, so now the last thing to do is cut two doors. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut some doors and then show the final product so you guys get an idea how to do it. So it's kind of hard to see because everything just looks like a mess of wire, but I actually cut two doors in or two holes four doors in. And I'm taking a slightly different approach to this set of doors from my last version of the double cage and I'm going ahead and bending the excess wire over at the edge and the reason I'm doing this is because when you're reaching in sometimes your arm or your hand gets caught and it gets scraped pretty bad so this is just rounding over the edges uh, and I'm hoping it's gonna protect my hands as well as the rabbits so 
to do this, uh, one thing I wanted to mention was when you bend it over, you don't want to bend it too close to the weld because if you bend too close to the weld, it's going to pop the weld off because the heat generated from bending the metal is going to cause the metals at the weld to separate and that's going to be a problem. And I can't get it to focus in, but you know where the weld is. So what I'm doing is uh, on the ones I'm bending over, let me see if I can find some. I'm just taking my needle nose pliers here and I'm just grabbing it right there and then I'm gonna bend that wire over with my hand. So if I had a free hand and it wasn't holding the camera, I'd just go ahead and grab the top of that wire and just bend it down uh, 180 degrees. And for these little guys on the side, kind of do the same thing and you can see you can see there's like a little space. It's not perfectly wrapped around the vertical wire. And that's because that's where the tip of the needle nose went. So that's just gonna protect the welds. On these tinier guys, you can't really bend it over with your fingers without causing too much pain to your fingers. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the Lyman pliers in combination with the needle nose. And I'm just bending them over. It's just a little tougher, but the end result Kind of looks like this with these these guys all bent over like that and i'm hoping that protects my hands all right so here we have it the finished cage with doors and rabbits inside i still got to put some more grass and obviously like their food and everything in there but for now this is the finished cage so i just wanted to show it to you clean before i put the tarp and everything on it um the doors if I had to do them again, instead of crimping them at the top, I might try just allowing this wire to come out a little further and then looping it over because I think that might work well, but this works really well. Um, I decided to open them up instead of to either side or down. And up is a pretty good way to go because if you happen to you need know, to like walk away and grab some food or some grass or something. It kind of hangs closed and they don't get too curious about hopping out. So hanging down is kind of like a safety. And if you ever forget to lock it, it's good because they can't really push it open. Also, another good thing to note about the doors is they kind of overlap a little bit from side to side. And the reason I decided to do that, so there's overlap on both sides, is this thing can slide. If I didn't crimp it so tightly, it would slide more but on my original cage, the door kind of slides left and right a little bit. And when you add a little overlap, that doesn't leave a gap for them to like stick their nose through and get scraped on the sharp edges or for, you know, an extra hungry raccoon to climb up and stick his arm through. But of course he can stick his arm through here anyway. But that's that. Hope you guys enjoy the video.